So, I just found out my mother-in-law to be, well, she doesn't like me. At first, she loved me, but then she discovered who my mom is and apparently get this. They have a feud that goes back until they were 13 years old, and you won't even believe what started this stupid lifetime feud. My mother and my mother-in-law hate each other, and they both have been taking their hatred out on me. I was in an abusive relationship with Alois, my mother-in-law, for a little over three months. My own mother has also been treating me like trash for the past five months for various reasons. Tyler, my husband's been living with his mother since birth and refuses to move out. Because A, he can't really afford it after the wedding, and B, his mother had requested multiple times that he stays with her even after he's married. I can't really ask him to move out, I haven't, because he told me this since the beginning of our relationship, I had no problem with it. His mother and I met a couple of times and she was extremely nice and welcoming to me back then. Tyler and I met a year ago, and it took us only a week to know that we'd each found our person. Now, I know marriage comes with compromise and no one's perfect, but Elise had started making coexisting with her next to impossible for me. She constantly ruined things for me, like throwing the clean laundry out the dryer and saying that she owned the machine and I should get my own. And she would tell me not to use her fridge for the food or any other thing in the kitchen. She even starts questioning my honesty and tried to confront me for stealing things I never stole, but rather things that she'd lost. My husband disagrees with her for the most part because of her continued issues with me I've started questioning her actions too. I started complaining about them to him. This annoys my husband, but he tries his best to calm me and his mother down. Heck, she even put body wash in my shampoo. Trust me, no one else would do it, and my husband and I both go out to work during the day, and she's the only one who stays at home and works online. She is pretty possessive about the things she owns and barely leaves the house because of it. It has to be her. She also started bad-mouthing me and then started doing it in front of my family, too. My sister came to visit one time, and all Eloise spoke of was me, and in the worst way possible. She called me names and then said it's all because I'm my mother's daughter. My mother, on the other hand, has been cribbling about my poor daughterly roles for five months, avoiding my existence like the plague and blaming me for many things constantly. She and my dad separated five months ago around the same time Tyler and I got engaged. The news of the separation was shocking enough to make me forget about telling them I got engaged. My dad still refuses to tell me why exactly it happened, saying he does not wish to speak of hurtful things. My mother, however, told me it was a misunderstanding and my dad's been unreasonable with his manners. Mom moved out and now lives with Beth, my sister. Beth also doesn't know why exactly this happened and we've both tried to convince mom and dad to make up, but they're both pretty stubborn. They both say that the others have crossed limits and denies meeting each other at all. One of the times when I tried to go talk to mom about patching up with dad, she and I had an argument where she called my father names continuously, and I could not take it, so I told her she probably should stay away from my dad. She took this to her heart and told me to leave and never to speak to her again. I left, and she stopped responding to my calls and texts and refused to open the door when I came to meet with her. She even forbade a Beth to get involved in this or else my mom would leave to go live on the streets. Beth was helpless and requested I stop, so I stopped pushing. I broke the news of my engagement to my father when Tyler told me Elois wanted to meet my parents, and he could not put it off any further. I also sent a text to mom that she chose not to respond to. Dad was still hurt at the time, but he told me he needed a moment of joy to think less of the heartbreak. He met Elois and told her my mom had severed ties with us and could not be there. Alois was sorry to hear it, but did not mind it, and she and Dad gave us their blessing. I tried to contact Mom again, but she did not respond. So, I asked Beth about her, and that's when I found out Mom had flown to Baku. She has a thing for traveling often, but she knew of the meetup and she refused to show any interest in it. Hopeless and tired, I decided to go through with it without her. Alois promised us, and... After party saying, she really wished that we did it in the church with simplicity. Tyler and I are fans of minimalism, so we agreed and we went through with it. 
surprisingly during Alois's after party. Mom came to meet me and wish me a happy marriage. Saying she was hurt, I chose not to involve her in a moment so big, but she can't forget she is my mom. I had mixed feelings while my dad chose to storm out. Beth did not know what to say, but then Alois walked over to us and stood in shock. Mom saw her and mirrored the same expression. They instantly started shouting at one another, asking what the other was doing there. Introductions were made in anger, and they were followed by more shock and a little annoyance. Get out of my party, Eloy shouted. With pleasure, good luck spreading lies, Mom shouted back as she stomped her way out. That's when I found out my mother-in-law was the same Eloise that tarnished my mother's reputation in college. The same vile woman who spread a false rumor about my mother, saying that she's been sleeping around and caught an STI because of it. Years ago, my mom had told me how ruthless college can be and how I should be, you know, very of such evil people who envy success. She told me Alois's story as an example, saying that she and Alois were both pretty close to topping class when Alois got pregnant and could not focus well enough, so she targeted my mother to slow her down too. But Alois had been very kind to me till my wedding day, and the episode left me confused. Tyler and I moved in with her and decided to postpone our honeymoon until the family issues could be resolved. We wanted the marriage to work and it was quite difficult since Alois and mom had somewhat sworn to prevent it. He loves his mom and I love mine, and we both love each other. We believed that we could fix this somehow, and while Alois was making home sound like a place I wanted to avoid, I made another attempt to try and clear things up with mom. Beth was out with her friends, but she told me where the apartment key was and wished me luck. I went in unannounced and found my mom making spaghetti, my favorite. I was very scared of her reaction, but I went and said hello. She didn't seem surprised and just tonelessly asked, What do you want? I told her I wanted to fix things and she responds with a sarcastic huff. I added that I need to know why she thought it was a good idea to eliminate me from her life and treat me like this. She tells me I was disrespectful, and without even knowing the whole thing, I chose to side with my father and my own mother, the bad guy. I told her to tell me the whole thing then, but she ignored it and continued to complain. She said that during one of my visits, when I went to convince her to rekindle her relationship with dad, she told me 32 long years of marriage could not prepare her for my father's hurtful words, so... I should have thought long and thoroughly before marrying Tyler. She told me marriage comes with a lot of compromise and hurt, and with time the loves fade. But the negative remains, and she said I went a step ahead. And Not only did I ignore her advice, but also showed my rebellion off to her by getting married so quick after. She said I obviously knew Alois, but hid that information from her on purpose. I tried to tell her that wasn't true, but she carried on. You didn't even bother waiting for me to return to exchange vows. She tested my patience greatly, but I tried to keep calm and responded, saying that I tried multiple times to contact her, and she refused to respond. And that Tyler and I really wish to get married in the fall, our common favorite season before Thanksgiving, and we couldn't really wait another year. So, Mom gets furious as she told me I should know how to prioritize the people I hold dear, and that she'd spent a great chunk of her life raising me and caring for me. I told her I'm thankful for the love and care that I have, and I respect her greatly for it. But she stopped talking to me at all, just leaving me with no hope. You should have kept trying, but just like your father, you gave up. Hearing those words rang a bell in my head, and I could not help but ask her what happened that separated her and dad. She lost her temper and told me to get out. I'll be honest, I was tired, mentally and emotionally, so I listened and left. All I could think of while I drove home was a nice little meal before bed. The moment I opened the door, my hopes were murdered. Alois stood in front of me and asked me where I've been all day. Too tired to care, I walked in and told her it's none of her business. Yeah, probably went to conspire with Kate, right? My mother's name is Kate. I took a sigh and asked her what she meant by that. Ah, uh, just like she did back in college. Uh, excuse me? 
Uh, Alois huffed and told me that right before finals, my mother found out Alois was pregnant while they were working on a project. Alois asked her not to tell anyone, but Kate was evil, she told everyone, and I got a bad reputation. I could not study or focus, and then Kate made it worse for me. I was doing better than her, and she could not tolerate it, so she lit up a dumpster fire. And you started a rumor about her? The STI? She deserved it eye for an eye! Ah, uh, that was Alois's response, and I was sh just shaking my head. She knew, she knew, she knew why I hid my mother from her at all times. I didn't hide her, okay, and why would I, I asked. She cut in, saying since I was vile, just like my mother. I teamed up with her to fool Tyler into marrying me, so I not only win the house, but also her in the process, as I would also take her son away from her. I bawled my fist, the audacity of this woman. I took a deep breath and then slowly tried to speak. I have no intention of taking your son away from you. This marriage makes him my husband, but it doesn't cut his ties with, you know, I know he's very close to you, which is why he lives with you. I married him not knowing that, but the house, how am I winning the house? Oh, surely my stupid son has already told you this house is in his name, not mine. Well, he didn't. You just did. Talk of stupidity, I thought to say it out loud, but I didn't. Instead, I said, it doesn't matter to me, because it really doesn't. And then I walked to my room and slept on an empty stomach. The next day was Sunday. I took all day to come up with a plan. The following week, I asked Tyler to help me and he agreed. I came home from work one day and faked a temper. Then I walked up to Elois and spoke about how good our relationship was before I got married. She used to bake cakes when I visited and I'd bring her gifts that she loved. I told her that I knew she was a good woman and I've never aimed to take advantage of that. I knew my mother had a feud with Alois from college but I never knew it was her. I asked her to give me another chance to make amends and she looked angry at first and her furrow softened and she just calmly said, Do not speak of her again. I smiled, I nodded and said, Well, don't speak of her again either. <laughs> I was a little shocked. Before I could compose myself, she added, If not, then you and Tyler can move out. Leaving me in total shock, she left the room. I know that we couldn't do that. Tyler would get greatly hurt, and I told him of this, and he apologized and said he could not ask me to cut ties with my mom. That we should start looking for a place to move to. I could see the sorrow in his eyes, so I told him to wait and trust me. The next day, I went to meet my mother and told her I wanted to make amends. She said so did she, but the circumstances did not allow it anymore. Well, I tried to convince her to please just patch it up with Alois, and she starts absolutely fuming. Well, have you lost your mind? She spread a rumor after you told everyone she was pregnant, I said. I thought it would help her notice that Alois just sort of got even. But oh my oh my, this was another rabbit hole I did not have to poke my nose in. Me? I was going to take that secret to the grave. It was Liz, the chatterbox who lived off gossip that told everybody. Everyone knows it's Liz. She fuels a fire, you know. Wow. She even added Elois was pregnant with our teacher's kid, saying that's why she was getting good grades. Mom explained I could only gasp. Poor Elois. I asked Mom if she believed any of that, and she said she did not since she had worked on a project with Alois and she was actually pretty good at the subject. I tried to explain that Alois believed it was her, and that she should try to clarify that. No need. Everyone seems to be assuming things about me these days. Let them assume it, she said. I then asked what I could do to fix things, and she said, move out. Don't you ever speak to that woman again. I reminded her that I love Tyler and he loves his mother greatly, and she said, divorce him too. I took a deep breath and told her that's not going to happen. Then don't you come calling me. A few days passed and I was ready with my plan. I went to my mom first and told her Tyler and I decided to move out and cut ties with Alois. I told her, I planned a surprise trip to Turkey for just the two of us. Our mother-daughter duo needed some healing and since she liked to travel, I thought that this would be right. Thankfully, she was deeply impressed and pleasantly surprised. 
She agreed to go and asked about the particulars of the trip. I told her it was nothing more than a gift from me and she needed to not worry about anything. Well, I then pulled a similar stunt with Alois. Yeah, you know where this is going. But I told her I would cut ties with my mom for her and Tyler. She did not even have much experience traveling, so I planned a trip for us two and I would handle everything. After continuous insistence, she agreed. The plan was a go. I actually scheduled them on different planes with similar times for the same hotel in the same room. I told them both that I would join them in the evening as I booked a cheaper flight due to limited expenses. They both took off, landed, and met each other at the same hotel yesterday, and my phone has been blowing up. I block their numbers, and I block their contacts, and the thing is, both of them don't have the tickets to come back, and both of them can't even afford to buy any. Mom, because she spent her savings on her sudden trip to Baku, and Alois, because she'd spent her savings on after parties and her getting cards fixed. Beth and Tyler are told to tell them they're, quote, trying to fix it to buy time. They're basically stuck together for a week in Turkey. Mom knows how to travel, and Alois is a proper rookie. Let's see how they manage. <laughs> and no, I don't think I'm helping them out unless they sort things out. Is that the right thing to do? Should I be worried? What do you uh, think about this idea? I just wanted to share this because I finally found some peace after a long time. I'm going to go to Dad and ask about his separation from Mom and update you guys about it. Update number one. Hey guys, thanks for the feedback on my story. I was wondering if I'd have an update soon enough. Tyler and I have been discussing how things would take effect and we've also been reading the comments. For more context, here's more to the story of my mother-in-law, Elois. So, she's been a loner most of her life and she found this one guy who would show any interest in her at all in college. Tyler's grandfather, Al wasn't very open-minded and he was strict about Alois's choice of friends and boyfriends, which she didn't have. Doug, whom Tyler calls his biological father, was a dealer who worked at a gas station near Alois's college. They met when she was once pumping gas and spoke a little bit. Then she became a regular. Doug made her laugh and told her he believed in her, and you know what all the liars say? Well, anyways, Alois actually trusted him. <laughs> Well, Al found out about Doug and even went ahead to warn Alois. He said he found out Doug was a dealer and the cops were looking for him, and Alois denied it, saying that he only worked at the gas station. Unable to control his daughter, Al called the police on Doug, and they found dirt on him. Sadly, he was locked up for some time, and when he was let go for some reason, Tyler thinks it's probably because he told on his friends. And anyways, so he came back to Alois and told her he's a changed man. That all he could think about in jail was her hesitant but innocent. Alois forgave him for lying and they got closer. They managed to keep it a secret from Al even and then she got pregnant. The first one was to tell was Doug as she was determined to keep the child in any case. He sadly for her refused to claim it at all. He said he was too young to take responsibility and had a whole life ahead of him. He said he didn't want any trouble and did not want to cause any more trouble either, and he even stooped low enough to question if there was any other men involved. Then he left. Heartbroken and disgusted with herself, Alois tried to focus on college and could not tell her father about it. And then the rumor happened. She was three months along when it happened, and people talked and laughed. Uh, Al found out and cut ties with her. Alois took a job at a store and came back at night to her dorm room and cried almost every day. She tried exceptionally hard to maintain her focus on studying. It only made matters worse, and her grades had only improved since the pregnancy. So people started saying she was sleeping with a teacher, and that is who got her pregnant. Well, her frustration and anxiety meddled with her mind and pushed her to take revenge for it. So she wrote on the bathroom walls about my mother. She left random notes in class and the rumor spread like a forest fire. But someone saw her writing a note one day and told everyone. Her writing was challenged and Alois had tried to change her writing when she wrote the notes but to no avail. Everybody knew and everybody assumed why and competition they all thought. Envy they all said and then mom told Alois it was people like her that deserved nothing but the worst. 
That quote stuck with Alois forever. She never trusted anyone, never looked for love, and all the love uh, and care that she had, she gave it to Tyler. She almost begged him to stay with her and to not forget about her and her love for him as he grew up. And he always told her that she had nothing to worry about. But her trust issues were great and she always came back asking and requesting the same thing. What do you think about this detail? I feel bad for her. She was really nice to me before I got married, but it's really only because of my mother that she hates me so much now. Updates. Number two. Okay, I don't think it was uh, such a bad idea, to be honest. I received a call from an international number and I took it and yep, you guessed it, it was my mom. She was furious at first and I tried to play it cool, but she soon started shouting again. If you're gonna keep at this, I'm putting the phone down. Uh, I yelled at her. Then I heard Alois telling my mother off for making things worse and she got on the phone. She sounded worried and confused and also a little angry. Why are you doing this? Um, because I feel like this is the only way. I know I sound a bit too rude, but I feel like this is a bit necessary to do. I can't stop now that my plans actually started to work. Anyways, she asked me what they were supposed to do there and for how long, and I told her that they were to stay there for a week and asked her if she'd met Azim, their guide. I told her he would handle their stay there and asked for the length of their stay. The longer they take to mend their ways, the longer they'll stay. I, however, have only paid for a week and they've already wasted three days. Mom gets angry and tells me to send her a ticket at once or she would never speak to me again. I just calmly refused and told her it would not happen. I also mentioned to her that there seems to be a major misunderstanding between the two regarding the events that occurred at college. They need to speak about it some more and Alois got on. Said she refuses to discuss her past and... Your past is now linked to your present big time. Please consider, I said before saying goodbye and putting the phone down. Let's hope that it worked. Now on to the next issue, my parents' separation. I went to meet my dad and he was very amused with the idea of sending mom and Alois. He said that he had chosen Timbuktu if it were him. <laughs> I asked him if that was a bad with him and mom. Well, he, as usual, avoided that and stood to get me coffee. I excused myself to go to the bathroom and went to his room and started looking for things. Clues, anything to give me any context. I was shocked to find a hospital file there. It was his, and apparently he's been getting tested for stomach cancer. I didn't know what to do with the information because I did not find any page saying the reports were negative. My dad has cancer? I have no idea what most of these tests mean, and I knew he had an ulcer, but cancer... I didn't mention it when I got back to the living room. I don't know how to approach it and we chatted a bit, but he still avoided the main question that I asked him. Now, I don't know what to do because things are getting more confused than bad. Update number three. I could not focus on anything else when I came back from dad's house. So after I uploaded the post, I drove back to his place and asked him directly, Dad, do you have cancer? He was shocked to see me there and asking that question, and it was quite wrongly placed too, I think. But he replied with no. So, still a bit confused, he gestured me to sit down on the sofa. So, I sat and told him I was very confused because I saw a hospital file. He asked me what I was doing in his room. I couldn't help but tell him the truth, and I told him I was looking for reasons, clues, and answers. Like any child would when their parents separate and refuse to let them know why. Most children still look for answers even when there is a reason. Then why can't I? He shook his head and sighed and he sat down beside me and said that he feels like mom is far too sensitive these days. She overreacts to many things and cries over the littlest of stuff. Now, she makes these abrupt decisions and quick conclusions without allowing explanations. And I reminded him she was almost in her mid-50s and that she's usually when mom hit menopause. It makes them crankier and emotional and unreasonable mostly. Maybe that's an addictive factor. He said he didn't think that was the case and did you ask, I questioned. He looked at me blankly and shook his head, eyes to the ground and I nodded, you should have asked. He agreed, then he slowly opened up and told me how one evening when he came back from his usual checkup, he'd been told that the tests they took a week ago were to check if he had stomach cancer. 
gastric carcinoma, they call it. Anyways, the reports were due that evening and he was received a call to be told about the results. He was very worried when he got home, but mom was at the door enraged. She asked him who Dr. Stacy was and why was she a frequent contacted person? He tried to ignore her question, but she stood in his way and told him she saw the notification on his lock screen that showed her name every now and then. Mom noticed that he would go to places telling mom he was going to meet a friend, but it wasn't true. She'd call those friends to check, and she said that she knew he was hiding something. But before dad could explain, she accused him of cheating on her. With his doctor. She thought it was just a woman who happened to be a doctor, though. She went on and on about how dad breached her trust and broke her heart after all those years. She then added that she expected nothing else of him. Well, this deeply hurt him. Dad tried to cut in saying, if you would just let me explain, but she refused to give him a chance. And then dad's phone rang. Mom snatched it from his hands and showed him it was Dr. Stacy. He closed his eyes and told her to please pick it up. She did, putting the phone on speaker and holding it out towards him. Uh, hello, David, are, are you home? Uh, yes. Uh, your reports are clear, no tumor, detective. Congratulations. Dr. Stacy said, draining the color from my mother's face. Oh, great, thanks a bunch, doctor. Dad replied with relief, and Dr. Stacy told him to still be careful with his diet and medication because the ulcer's still there. He agreed and ended the call. The room was extremely silent and mom knew that she was wrong. Tears filled her eyes and dad turned away from her while she came, well, calling his name, but he didn't stop walking. David, I'm sorry. You didn't even let me explain. Uh, she begged and begged to give her another chance, but all he did was stop and tell her that she just told him she'd expected nothing else from him. So he was a cheater to her. She cried some more and apologized, saying she didn't mean it. You're a vile woman, Kate, and after all these years, it's finally starting to show. Maybe, just maybe, Alois was right, or maybe you're both the same. This hit Mom hard, I mean too hard. She had not spoken of that woman in so long, but hearing my dad question the false rumor that affected her greatly during the college and comparing her to the woman that caused it seemed like the end of the world. I'm not the woman you say I am, but I'm certainly not the woman you said you loved. She said before she grabbed her purse and left. She came the following days to get her things and move them to Beth's apartment, and Dad did not stop her. I think they're both overreacting. I mean, what should they do? Final update. Hey guys, this is probably it. I just wanted to write and tell you guys that I finally got a call on the sixth day of my mom and mother-in-law's stay in Turkey. They told me they finally sat down and talked about college and cleared many, many misunderstandings. Alois now knows it was not my mom, but Liz, who spread the news and then added fuel to the fire. Mom knows why Alois did what she did and has forgiven her. They asked me to send their tickets and I did it. So they came back two days ago and Alois personally apologized to me for her behavior. Guess what? Body wash and shampoo, that was her, but I'm over it, honestly. She baked my mom and me a cake and Tyler hasn't been happier in so long. Mom's also apologized and said she hasn't been getting her periods most of the year, and it's been worrying her. She thinks it's probably menopause, because if it is, then that's why she's been too touchy these days. Well, well, well. As for my father and my mom, Dad apologized for his words, and Mom apologized for judging him. They're finally back together, and Beth and I are so relieved. Just wanted to thank everyone for their support, and I have a family dinner tonight. We're all celebrating, and Alois is baking a cake, and Mom's bringing her special spaghetti. Tyler and I will be going on our honeymoon in the next few months, since we spent most of the time of what we had on Mom and Alois's trip. No worries, though. It's well worth it. Thank you guys for reading my story. So, this story was interesting because OP took advantage of the situation, the fact that these two people hated each other, and OP was going to find a solution for it, but there were some commenters that said this was a dangerous situation, abandoning your mother-in-law and your mom in a foreign country with the one person on earth that they hate the most, each other. It could have turned out disastrous, but luckily for OP and everybody else involved, 
it looked like it turned out for the better and people were able to forgive each other. I do want to know if you guys think OP went way too far with the way that OP went about setting this up. Drop it down below, guys. Let's talk about it. Luckily, at the end of the story, OP and Tyler were able to go on their own trip together because everything seemed to be doing better in their family life, guys. My name's Mr. Redditill. I narrate stories every day. And if you want to be a part of these daily readings, consider subscribing to the channel. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.